clouds and trees Plant a flower garden up on top of the moon Go swing through the jungle all afternoon Wherever our story takes us I can't wait to see Yes, friends, come and read with me It's online story Hello, Storytime friends, and welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Missy, and we are delighted to have you with us today. We are. Hey, Teacher Missy, before we talk about this thing that we're going to talk about in a little bit when we start talking about this thing. This thing. This you want to sing? Let's sing. Storytime about friends. this thing. <laughs> okay. Those rhymes. Sing. I know. Thing, thing and sing. And sing are rhyming words. They are. So clever. All right, so would you sing with us? Not about this thing, but we'll sing and use these things, okay? Can you get your clappers ready? Whatever you're gonna clap, here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. Oh, Ooh. I blinked my eyes too. Did you? I clapped and I blinked. What if that I could stand at the same time? That may take more coordination than I have. <laughs> hey, Teacher Missy, what do you want to talk about today? We're going to talk about this thing. Oh my gosh. Do you look, know what that is? Look at these guys. Do you know what these are? Does that look familiar to you at all? Hmm. They're tiny, tiny, itty bitty birds. They are. They're hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, which are, I think, just one of the most amazing creatures. They are so tiny and they fly so fast. Um, Do you know that there are over 300 kinds of hummingbirds on this planet? That's a lot. It's amazing. And it, they, it's true. They are the smallest birds um, known are hummingbirds. And they have little teeny tiny eggs. And Miss Dion will show us a picture of those right now. Isn't that amazing how small those eggs they are? They are just itty bitty. And something I learned when I was getting ready for the story time, I was reading up about hummingbirds. Something I learned is that the female hummingbird will always only lay two eggs. I did not know that. Yeah, so um, other kind of birds will lay different types of eggs, or different numbers of eggs, not different types of eggs, but they will lay different numbers of eggs. A hummingbird will always only lay two. Hmm. Yeah. Well, as little as they are, that's probably all they can hold. Maybe that's true. Yeah. That, that's all that can form in their body. Did you also know that hummingbirds travel all the way to Mexico? They migrate. They do migrate. And when they leave the southern part of the continent and come back, they come back to the same place they left. Isn't that incredible? So the hummingbirds that you might be seeing at your, at your house, if you have a feeder, or even if you don't, because they love flowers, um, are probably the same ones that came last year. That's crazy. And speaking of flowers, another fact I learned, Storytime Friends, is that a hummingbird has to eat like every 10 or 15 minutes throughout the day, and they will go to a thousand or even 2,000 flowers every single day. Wow. They are moving like crazy. That is amazing. I did not know that. That's yeah. amazing. I learned a lot of facts <laughs> about hummingbirds. And another cool fact about hummingbirds is, I learned that August, which is the month we're in right now, is one of the best months to find hummingbirds. Because you know, we talked about how hummingbirds migrate, which means that they move with the warmer weather. So when it's winter time in Minnesota up here, it's still warm down here in Mexico. And when it's even colder in Canada, they will migrate farther south. Well, what's happening right now is that the eggs that were born this spring are big enough that they have flown away from the nest and the hummingbirds that, have, that are migrating or moving are coming here from Canada. So in Minnesota, in August, we have the hummingbirds that were here all summer. 
we have the hummingbirds that were just born this year, and we have the hummingbirds that are starting to migrate south. So in August in Minnesota is one of the best times to see hummingbirds. That is amazing. Did you know there is an insect called a hummingbird moth? Oh, I have heard that. Have you ever seen one? I have not. They look just like a hummingbird. Wow. And, and they buzz around just in that you know same fashion. So if you're, because we have a feeder in front of our house, so we do a lot of watching them, but there, it, 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 you have to look you know, like two or three times to see if it's the moth or the hummingbird. It's, they're pretty cool. That's and I only see them this time of year. Okay. Like not in the early part of the summer. Okay. Wow, that is so cool. Hey, Teacher Missy, do you have any good books about hummingbirds? I have books about hummingbirds. Miss Tracy? Yes, Teacher Missy. Check this out. That's a beautiful ruby-throated hummingbird. Isn't that just beautiful? Do you know that's the kind of hummingbird we have most in the United States, is the ruby-throated hummingbird. I think, and that's what I see at my house. Um, and, and the females and the males look a little different. Do you know who has the ruby throat? I don't know. It's the boy hummingbird. Oh. He gets to be the pretty one. And the female does not have the red strip, but she's got beautiful kind of greenish and gold feathers. And this is called Tiny, Tiny Bird. A Hummingbird's Amazing Journey, written by Robert Burley and illustrated by Wendell Miner. And this book comes to us from Henry Holt Publishing. We're gonna find a lot of cool things out, you guys. You can't really see because of my cover, but I'm gonna show you. Right here it shows a chicken egg, and here's a hummingbird egg. Look at how tiny they are. And this is actually showing you about the size. They're about three and a half inches tall and just maybe five inches sideways. So they're little. Just little bitty things. Hummingbird wings can fly at more than 50 times a second. And a second is a very short period of time. Like when I say 1001, that hummingbird has flapped its wings 50 times. Wow. Unbelievable. Tiny bird. Today is the day. In the yard, the last orange flowers open their petals to the slanting sun. A tiny ruby-throated hummingbird is feeding just three inches long. Tiny bird hovers over a blossom as if hanging from an unseen thread. They're like little helicopters. Whirr. Its wings flutter more than 50 times a second, so rapidly that they're nearly invisible. They go so fast you can hardly see them. Zip! It darts up. Zap! It flits down. Flower to flower, backward, <coughs> forward, under, over, like an acrobat in the air. Radiant green feathers glimmering, ruby throat shimmering. Tiny bird delicately dips its beak into the heart of each flower, extracting precious nectar. It will need as much food as it can gather for the hard trip ahead. And that's what Miss Tracy was talking about, that migration. That little tiny bird is going to travel, well, it's probably a couple thousand miles. It is, yep. The flowers are fading, insects grow quiet, leaves are turning yellow, autumn is coming. Born in the northeastern yard, Tiny Bird has explored every inch of its small territory, but now it feels a pull and knows it must go. It must leave this familiar place and fly to a far off winter home. Today's the day. Away! Heading south all alone, Tiny Bird begins its amazing journey. It flies low, skimming the tops of trees. Zoom! Its wings rapidly rotating. Tiny bird speeds along, sometimes nearly 30 miles an hour. Wow. Wow. No one sees it gliding over the farm's fields or train tracks, but tiny bird sees everything. Its eyes are sharp. Swoop. Diving down, it spots a few flowers on which to feed. Jab, jab, poke. 
flicking sideways, it snatches a passing fly and even raids a spider web for more fuel along its journey. I did not know that they ate insects, mm -hmm. but they do. <gasps> Excuse me. Whoops, danger. Quickly, tiny bird zigzags out of the path of a hawk, reeling from the whoosh of the hawk's enormous wings. Oh, that was a close call. Day after day, farther and farther, pausing to rest here and there along the way. Tiny Bird travels southward, and yet it must keep going. The most difficult part of the perilous journey is soon to come. The Gulf of Mexico lies waiting. Dark blue, deep and vast, it glitters in the sun. Tiny Bird lingers for a moment near the shore, its tongue unfurling to gather flower nectar Quicker than a blink, it naps one last mosquito. Then into the air, over the first pounding waves, it begins nonstop flight of more than 24 hours. This little bird is gonna fly through an entire day and night. Can tiny bird make it? Oh, many hummingbirds don't. As far as the distant horizon, there is nothing but sky and sea, an empty expanse of water stretching in all directions. Tiny Bird makes its way, staying just inside the curve of the waves to protect itself from the onrushing wind. And he's right here. He's kind of ducked under the wave. I hope he doesn't get squashed under one. Whoop, watch out! A fish leaps up. It's jaws snapping, Whew, narrowly missing that little bird. Oh, that fish was looking for some lunch. I'll have to try a different restaurant. <laughs> As the setting sun tints the sky orange, dark clouds form. A sudden storm stirs the sea. Between flashes of lightning, Tiny Bird struggles, fighting through the wind and pelting rain. Thunder crashes, ba -boom. Slower, slower, tiny bird begins to falter. Its wings grow heavy as it dips, even closer to the dangerous water. You think he's getting tired? Oh my goodness, what a big journey for such a little thing. Finally, the wind dies down. The storm moves on. In the darkness ahead, a small fishing boat rocks its dim light swaying, a resting place. The bird perched lightly on the bow of the wooden boat, gathering its strength. Then, into the night again. And you can see it's right here, hitching a ride for a little bit so they can rest up. Good thing that boat was there. Marbled clouds pass, moonlight opens, a smooth and widening path on the water. Millions of stars blanket the sky. At last, the Earth's horizon glimmers with the first hint of day. Suddenly, in the dawn light, above a wave's curl, land. We can see land. Green trees and vines Rainbow-hued flowers. Oh, Tiny Bird is worn and thin after its travels. Exhausted, it rests on a twig for just precious seconds. Then it flits into the forest to feed on the plentiful flowers and insects. Because now we know they eat bugs too, don't we? Today is the day after flying more than 1,500 miles, Tiny Bird has arrived. It has reached its winter home at last. In the spring, it will return, flying back to the same yard it left so many months earlier. But for now, Tiny Bird rests and feeds, flickering from flower to flower, like an emerald spark flashing in the bright sun. Yes, today is the day.
and you finally made the journey. Isn't that amazing? I bet he's glad to have some place to rest. Wow, what an amazing journey. Hey, story time friends. Guess what time it is? Hey, teacher Missy, do you know what time it is? I do not. It's flannel time. Oh, oh yeah, it's flannel time. Yeah, I know. It's it's really a big deal. Okay. It is Would a big deal. Would you guys like to do a flannel about hummingbirds? I know, crazy idea, isn't it? Okay. This is called Five Little Hummingbirds. And this is how this goes. One little hummingbird zipping around the flowers. It looked so yummy. Along came another. Here he is, he goes, oh, delicious. I'm gonna eat the nectar from this one. Two little hummers sipping flower juice. Along came another. Is it time for a snooze? I think they're getting tired. Three happy hummers filling up their tummies. Hummer four joins them. The nectar is so yummy. Four hummingbirds. One, two, three, four. Thinking of going south. A fifth one joins to put nectar in his mouth. <laughs> Five full hummingbirds feel the need to fly. See you next spring, we say. Fly safe and goodbye. And there they go on their way to Mexico. Hey, thanks for playing. Miss Tracy, check this out. I have another book. Oh, that's a little hummingbird on the front. It is a little hummingbird. And this little hummingbird also has, a looks like a red stripe around his throat. So I bet that's the same kind of hummingbird that we read earlier. This is called Little Green. Little Green. Um, written and illustrated by Keith Baker. Yeah, that's our, so just one person worked on this book. And it comes to us from Harcourt um, Books. And we're going to find out about Little Green. Little Green what? Okay, we're going to struggle with this one. These pages are way big. Okay. I see you out there, Little Green. What is that? What is that child doing? Yep, painting. Looks like he's painting. Oh, and look at There's a hummingbird. In the flowers and between. There he's after the nectar. Zipping round and round and round. And remember how fast they move. So incredibly fast. Jigging, jagging, down and up and down. They don't stay still. Dip, dip, dipping. <gasps> sip, sip, sipping. He's getting a drink from the hose. I bet they just take little tiny swallows. Looping in a curly cue. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Have you ever had a hummingbird go past you? It's the coolest sound. Little Green, I still see you. I wonder where Little Green is. Oh, here. There's Little Green. Lots of flowers there for that. 
going, coming, softly humming, and they do make the coolest noise. Just a little humming sound, which I guess is why we call them hummingbirds. Stopping, starting, dashing, darting. Here's that zigzag. Zigging, zagging everywhere. And you see all those white marks show where he's going. So busy. So many flowers. Hovering up in the air. There he is. This is just an awkward book to hold. Coming closer for a good view. I wonder what he's looking at. Probably another flower. I wonder if you see me too. Do you think he can see the boy? And he kind of looks like he's looking at him. Well, I've been busy watching you. Yes, he has. And painting how you flew and flew. <laughs> That's just what that hummingbird was doing, wasn't he? Oh, that is too funny. I love that. He painted a picture of how he flew and flew and flew around and up and down, back and forth. time, friends. Hey, Teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. How about we do a little shaking? Okay, so out of your story time kit, I'd like you to find your shaker egg. And if you don't have a shaker egg, you can shake almost anything. We've made shakers using dried beans and envelopes. Teacher Missy, how about if you use, this is just bottle caps in a plastic container. We'll give that one to teach well, That Missy. looks like a good one. Yeah, so you can shake almost anything. So gather all your shakers and we are gonna shake about hummingbirds. Are you, excuse me? Did you hear something? I did hear something. Yes, of course. Story time friends. Giraffe would like to be our story time friend today. Hello, Teacher Missy. Good morning, Giraffe. Hello, story time friends. Did you say hello to Giraffe? Good. All right. Giraffe is going to sit here while we do some shaking. Okay, we're going to start with a warm-up shaker song, one that we haven't done in a while, and it's called We Shake Our Eggs Together. Are you ready? Here we go. We shake our eggs together, we shake our eggs together, we shake our eggs together. Because it's fun to do, shake them up high, shake them down low, shake them in the middle, because it's fun to do. Whoa! Should we do that one more time? Okay, here we go. We shake our eggs together, we shake our eggs together, we shake our eggs together. Because it's fun to do, we shake them up high, we shake them down low, we shake them in the middle. Because it's fun to do. All right, that was some great shaking. Now, our egg, or our shaker, is going to turn into, guess what? A hummingbird! Oh, no. Doesn't it kind of sound a little bit like a hummingbird? The way that we hear the wings go... Boy, that, yeah. All right. So we are going to sing a song together called There's a Hummingbird in the Air. And I actually have some words back here for 
our friend teacher Missy. She grabbed them herself on the other I side. Just saw the title sitting right there. She is very competent when it comes to grabbing things, and she I did know. it all I'm by a herself. Grabber. I know. She didn't even need me. Not even one time. Okay. All right. So we are going to sing. There's a hummingbird in the air. All right. And our hummingbird is going to be landing in some pretty crazy spaces. Here we go. There's a hummingbird in the air, in the air. There's a hummingbird in the air, in the air. There's a hummingbird in the air. Now he's flying in my hair. There's a hummingbird in the air, in the air. Did your hummingbirds land in your hair? I'm not sure I'm comfortable with a hummingbird in my hair. Let's put him someplace else, okay? Here we go. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. There's a hummer on my leg. I hope he doesn't lay an egg. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. Do you know there's something wrong with that song? When I wrote that, I wrote, I hope he doesn't lay an egg. Male hummingbirds don't lay an egg. Maybe we should, let's sing that part again. Okay, here we go. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. There's a hummer on my leg. I hope she doesn't lay an egg. There's a hummingbird on my leg, on my leg. Oh my goodness. All right, where else can your hummingbird go? There's a hummingbird on my nose, on my nose. There's a hummingbird on my nose, on my nose. There's a hummer on my nose. I can see his tiny toes. There's a hummingbird on my nose, on my nose. So tiny. Did your hummer land on your, on your nose too? And you can make your hummer land wherever you want to. Here it goes. Hey, thanks for playing. Story time, friends. Can you even believe all that we learned about hummingbirds today? Hey, Teacher Missy, what was your favorite new fact about hummingbirds today? My favorite new fact is that they only laid two tiny eggs. I know, that was crazy. Yeah, I did not know that, and that is amazing. And I just think how little those eggs are. How tiny are. they yeah. are. My so favorite new fact of the day was that a hummingbird has to eat every 15 minutes, and they go between 1,000 and 2,000 flowers every day. Right. And they travel thousands of miles to get to their winter homes. That's right. Wow. Yeah, that's well, pretty I'm, miraculous. I loved learning about hummingbirds. It was so much fun. They're, they're incredible, like incredible little birds. And we just read some great stories about hummingbirds and sang a little hummingbird ditty down here about them drinking all of their nectar from their flowers. And I had happy. such a good day. Yeah, this is awesome. Story time, friends. I think it's time for us to leave. Would you sing with us? All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Story time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. See if you can find a hummingbird.